Hi, I'm Christopher Gillen. I make knives. Today's video is all about engraving and surface grinding the blade steel. Continuing on with the following star. So previously I showed you how I machine my bevels, how I sand out the step overs, and today what we're going to cover is how to determine how to surface grind down your blade to the final thickness and also, we're going to uncover in this video engraving. We're going to cover how to put the maker's mark, my name, on the blade. So while this machine works, let's go to the whiteboard and I'll talk to you about how to determine your final thickness. Welcome back to the surface plate. So we're surface grinding down these blades and we're shooting for a final blade thickness. I want to take a minute here and, and talk to you guys about how do you know what should be the final thickness of your blade steel. And to do that you need to know two things. One is the thickness of your backspacer or your standoff and the second is the thickness of your washers. So what's a backspacer? A backspacer is the material that goes between the two halves of a knife and holds the two halves together. You can use almost anything for a backspacer. You can use titanium, old blade steel, c tech G10, carbon fiber, micarta, even titanium laminates. So you can use almost anything to make your backspacer. So let's talk a little bit about the mathematics to determine your final blade thickness. Once your backspacer material is flat and parallel, you need to know the thickness of it. And the second thing that you need to know is the thickness of your washers. I have here three different types of washers. Some are phosphorus bronze. This one's a Teflon and they're all different thicknesses. The final thickness of the blade, it will always be different Based on the thickness of your backspacer, you subtract the thickness of your washers times two for each half. And that will determine your final thickness of the blade. So let's do a quick example. This titanium is 200 thousandths thick. We start with 200 thousandths. And now if we were going to use this Teflon washer, it's 15 thousandths thick. So it would take from 200 thousandths, we would subtract 30 thousandths because there's two washers on each side of the blade. We would take our final blade thickness down to 170. As an alternative to a backspacer, some makers like to assemble the two halves of the knife together using what's called a standoff. The standoff is a nice alternative to a backspacer in that it makes the knife easier to clean and maintain. The trade-off is, is the knife must be centered. They will show if the blade is off center. Here's another example. This time we're using a standoff. Uh, the standoff is 155. Our washer is 10 thousandths. So we're gonna subtract 20 thousandths for two washers on each side of the blade. We take the blade to just over an eighth of an inch. It's 135 thousandths. And this is how you determine the final thickness of your blade steel. So very simply, our blade thickness is 150 thou. Our target is 135 thousandths. That means that we need to surface grind down 15 thousandths. But we need to do this from um, two halves of the knife. So we're going to divide it by two. We're going to take off seven and a half thousandths off each half of the knife. And this is something you need to be aware of as you're surface grinding down your blades. And now we're surface grinding this down. And as you surface grind it down to your final thickness, a few things will happen. One, your plunge will become crisp again. And two, the cheek will grow longer towards the tip. And so if you're not careful, you'll lose your, uh, your symmetry. So you don't just put this on the magnetic chuck and take down 
15 thousandths. You want to take off seven and a half off each side. And that will keep this cheek symmetrical. Already you can see I have surface ground on one side. It's actually getting a little bit longer than this other side. So what I'm doing here is I'm sur surface grinding down my blades to my targeted thickness. I'm taking equal amounts off both sides of the blade. Here's our blade. You can see it looks pretty good. Um, you can see that the cheek are symmetrical where they end. It's the same points. The false edge are symmetrical. And we achieve that by taking off equal amounts off the blade, both halves of the blade. We surface ground half, flip the part over, and then surface ground the other half. It's very easy to forget which side you surface ground, and that's why we, again, use the Sharpie tip and mark the X on one side before we took it off the magnetic chuck. So what I'm going to do now, real quick, before we put this in the machine, is I'm going to demagnetize this blade. So here's the blades as we're going to put them back inside the VMC and engrave my maker's mark. So here's what I use to engrave with. I use a 20 thousandths engraving ball. It has a 20 degree taper. It's two flute. It's nano coated. These work ex extremely well. I'm very happy with these. And if you're wondering where I got it from, I got them from Carl. So very quickly, I need to change out this reamer to the engraver. So what I'm doing here is I'm writing on the blade still type. And after this point in time, you don't have to worry about Sharpies. Once it's engraved, you'll know how to heat treat it. I'm really happy with using Fusion 360 for my engraving. Just so you guys can see what I've done. I have engraved USA because I absolutely love this country. I put the blade steel type on there. This is uh, Carpenter's Technological Steels XHP. And I also put an 82 degree bevel on the 093 pass through hole uh, so that the 2x56 screw will sit flush. And what I'm going to do now is very quickly I'm going to lap it and then we'll flip it over and put the maker's mark. As for the engraver, there's a little 20 thousandths ball on the end. And no matter what kind of tool I'm using, I never like to step down into titanium more than 25% of the diameter of my tool. And since this engraver has a little 20 thousandths ball on the end, um, I would just step down 5 thousandths for my engraving, 5 thousandths. So I would engrave 5 thousandths deep. Another thing, it's very hard on the spindle to have the Haas very rapidly raise up and down into Z. I would program that with the fixed high feed rate in the Fusion 360. You could also do it with the Rapids. I have a Haas. I don't know if other people have Rapids on their controller. I'm sure that some do. Woo! That was a long video to get through on it. That mathematics is pretty rough. Thanks for sticking through all the way to the end. You must like this kind of stuff. Please subscribe. Videos that come out every Wednesday. Please subscribe. Yeah, it took me a whole day to get through it. This is actually the next day. I'm now making handles and I'll show you that in a future video.